sharing, show my screen. All right. Uh, always in front. Okay. Now, you guys should be able to both see my screen. I think it's that way. And you should be able to see me. Um, do you guys want to see what an ugly, ugly day it is here in Miami today? I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or not. i got to move my computer around. Can you see that? It is ugly out here today. Look at that. It's raining. It's gray. But, of course, it's Miami, so it's hot and humid as hell out there. Um, it is hot and humid out there. Okay. Referrals. We're going to talk about referrals today, and uh, I'm going to show you how to make more of them um, because as we will see in just a minute here, they are definitely more, uh, more profitable uh, uh, leads, as, uh, as we all know very well. A um, couple of housekeeping items. Um, you guys are all muted. Um, that's so that I can eliminate background noise, obviously. Um, if you have a question, or comment, just go into the question box because I can see that question box. You'll see me kind of looking back and forth, and, and uh, that's what I'm doing. And uh, this is being recorded, so if there's somebody on your team that you want to um, see this, um, make sure that um, you look out for the email for the replay, which will be either tomorrow or the next day. And um, yes, um, I don't know how many of you are going to be in D.C. next week, but me and Addie are going to uh, are going to be there. We're going to be in and out real quick. Um, I think we get in Monday morning, and we're out Tuesday afternoon, and then the next day we head out to um, we head out to L.A. Um, okay, I think that's all the housekeeping items. Um, let's get right into this. So need more referrals? Here's how. Um, here's how we're going to do it. So, um, so during this training today, um, we're going to talk about why more referrals, uh, five, five proven ways to get more referrals. I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a company that does this about as well as anybody I know um, because – um, not only are they um, not only are they a larger company, so they are essentially driving millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars in referral business to them, but they're also um, a one product company. They basically only sell one thing, and so everything that they do, yeah, there's some element of repeat work there, but not really. It's really more about uh, referrals over there. Um, so I'm going to take you behind the scenes and I'm going to show you, you know, kind of all the things that they do. And ultimately here by the end, um, we will um, show you how to re uh, increase your referral numbers. I mean, just even by a few, 10%, 25, 35% or, or more. You know, you kind of have to decide how much uh, effort you want to put into it. Um, by the way, um, this is something that is available to everybody. It's a book that I wrote called The Definitive Guide to Relationship Marketing. And there's a lot in here about um, not just referrals, but also repeat and relationship. Um, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, Referrals, repeat business, the strategies are very similar. They're the same. The things that you're going to do to get referrals will also help you get repeat business. The things that you're going to do to get repeat business are also the things that are going to help you get referrals. So they really are kind of one in, um, in the same. But um, if you want this, uh, this book, um, just let us know, and we will get one out to you right away. I don't have a copy of the blueprint right here in 
front of me. I should have one. Um, Alex, bring a blueprint in here, uh, please, so I can show everybody. And usually we send the blueprint out with that book. So just let me know, and we will be uh, happy to send that out to you. All right, so why more referrals? Well, one of the simple reasons is because they close at a much higher rate, right? So you've got um, your typical close rates are somewhere in the 25 to 30% range. Referrals are going to close at a much higher rate. 40, 50% 40, is, is what we uh, see as the close rate on referrals. Referrals are also going to have less price resistance. So, you know, um, one of the big, big things that we've been talking about this year is profitability. You know, last year, most everybody had a really good year. You ask them, you know, how was business? Oh, business was up. Business was great. But then we ask, well, okay, but how much money went to the bottom line? I know your top line grew, but what about your bottom line? Did your bottom line grow? And in a lot of cases, the top line grew and grew a lot, but the bottom line didn't. So to me, so why the hell do we want to increase top line if we're not increasing bottom line? It's too much risk. And anyway, so one of the things that I would say to all of you is really this year has got to be a focus on profitability um, this year and every year. But this year in particular, because I know that many of you, most of you are up again over last year. You were up last year. You're up again this year. And so being up for the sake of being up, and if you've seen my articles or listened to the podcast lately, um, you'll, you'll notice that this is something we've talked about. In fact, we just did, I just did a podcast with Dave Yoho, Sr., and this was the topic that we talked about. And next week at, the, at the, his event, um, that's also what's going to be uh, discussed, and it's really going to be um, a, a big, important topic. By the way, if anybody's on the call or on the, on the webinar and um, still wants to go next week, I think we've got one or two tickets left. They're, they're free. They're on us uh, because we're sponsors. So just let me know, and uh, we'll hook you up. Um, so less price resistance so we can get premium pricing. We all need to be premium price providers. We don't want to be Kmart. We don't want to be Walmart. It might work for some people, but for most of you, it doesn't work. In fact, this, the example company I'm going to show you um, here uh, is not Walmart and not even close. They're Nordstrom. They're Nordstrom and Saks, you know, somewhere in there, all right? Lower leap cost. And then there's this concept that I talk about called automatic trust. And what automatic trust is, is basically um, if I am making a recommendation to your company, to a friend, to somebody that I know, then there is this implied trust of you that comes from my recommendation. I call this automatic trust. Um, I think most of you get it. I'm not going to go too far into it. But this is part of the reason why the close rates are higher and there's less price resistance. Okay? So automatic trust. Now, with referrals, there is an opportunity here, but there's also a challenge, and this is the funny picture. The challenge is that in a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, um, referrals are the unicorn lead. They are really the toughest lead to make. I can make uh, internet leads, newspaper leads, um, name it, uh, magazine leads easier than I can make referral leads. Now, I'm not telling you this to discourage you because you've got to have referrals coming into your business. You have to. If you want to be a wealthy contractor, if you want this bu your business to be as successful, sustainable, uh, profitable for the long term, then you've got to have a base of business that's coming in by way of referrals. You've got to. You got to. Now, I'm not even touching on future value here of your business, equity value of your business. What could it possibly be worth later, you know, if you go to sell it, right? 
So that's why I was looking for a unicorn picture. And this, by the way, these are, if you ever come and visit in Miami, um, just let us know and um, we can go uh, hang out. Uh, this is actually this is actually our house, and we bought these. Uh, this is a house we just moved into, but we just bought these these unicorn floaties that hold drinks. So that's what you see right here is is a unicorn floaty out at at uh, outside of our uh, pool, and uh, there's a beer in this one. Anyway, so uh, they are yes, they are unicorn leads. However, there's a huge opportunity here that I want to show you guys how to capture um, because it will help make you more money. It's going to help make your business more um, successful. Um, I think a lot of you maybe know me, maybe you don't know me. This might be your first time here. I'm not going to go over all of my whole background. I think what's important here um, is that I've been in the home improvement business since I'm 21 years old, right? I'm a little bit older than that now, like a lot older than that now. Um, so I've been in the business a really, really long time and um, had a number of companies in the home improvement space. And what I was really always kind of good at was the marketing side of it. And so when I, when I sold my uh, company back in 2007, was it, or six, well, somewhere in the 2006, 2007, I kind of, you know, hung out a little while, wrote this book, How to Double Your Profits in Six Months or Less, and then started doing some consulting work, and then we started G4 Marketing in 2009 um, to help companies with referrals, with repeat business, with relationships, with equity value. And um, it's been eight years, actually, like right around now. We started in June of 2009, so it's been eight years that we've been doing this, and we work with, you know, I'm, we're, we're, we're very fortunate and... Um, and, and blessed to work with so many great companies um, out there. Um, some you would know, some are you know local local companies. But we you know we work with some great companies. So again, what's important here is not so much you know my background, but it's all of this information that I'm bringing you is real world stuff. It's stuff that's working right now. It's stuff that's working today. Um, it's not stuff I just read out of a book and now I'm regurgitating back to you. This is all stuff that's actually working in the field right now with real world companies. All right, and that's why you know I believe in in talking to you from experience, not from what you know I think would be great or anything like that. I want to uh, show you what's working uh, in the real world. So that's why I'm going to introduce you and I'm going to bring bring in. Um, the Hausch family. Now, we met the Hausch family just a few months after we started the we started the business. Matthew over here, and um, Ari and Stephen and Becky. Now, um, Ari and Becky are the mom and the dad. They started the company back in the like early '90s. I always forget. It's, Ari's been in the business like forever since he was really young. And so I think he started in the 80s, but they started Aries Roofing in the 90s. Anyway, when I met them at a um, wealth builder conference, um, I was talking about this very subject. And Matt, I believe it was just Matthew and um, Ari that were, that were there that day. And Matthew says to his dad, hey, we, you know, we need this. And um, at the time, I think they were doing about four or five million in revenue. Last year, last year, they did 17. Now, of that, and why I'm introducing you to them, aside from the fact that they're an amazing family, wonderful people, beautiful people, um, and they run a hell of a business, is that a majority of that business came from referrals. So now we've been able to help a little bit we're involved in them and i'll show you some of the stuff that we do for them but here's the thing is that there's a bunch of stuff they do that's why referrals are a tough lead to make i can help you i can share best practices with you but there's a lot of things that you have to do at the ground level toe to toe face to face with your customers in order for you to be able to earn the right to get those referrals. See, referral leads have to be earned. 
a, a, uh, an internet lead, uh, an ad in a magazine or something, you don't have to earn that. You just have to create a compelling enough message to the right people, to the right audience, to get them to raise their hand and say, yeah, this is a problem I have. I have a roofing problem, a plumbing problem, a window problem, whatever. And they raise their hand and they become a lead for you. But um, with a referral, with a referral, you're relying on a somebody that knows you, has done business with you, talking to their friends, actively going and talking to their friends, family, coworkers, neighbors about you. And so there are certain things that need to be in place in order for that lead to be made. Okay? That's where it's that's where the challenge lies. That's where the challenge lies. And that's why I say it's the toughest lead to make. But if you tweak a few things in your business, you can get you could do the same stuff they're doing. I have other clients too, by the way. I've got a client in the DC area who is one of the masters of this. And I really I gotta do something one day with him too. I gotta show you some of the stuff that he does. Because I mean, he doesn't need me. All I do is I make his life easy because I execute stuff that he's already doing. I just make his life easy, right? He's all, he wants to do newsletters. So instead of him having to put them all together, we do it for him. Gifting, the, the, any, the same stuff I'm going to show you here that Aries does, he does as well. So the, the point is, is that I can, point, I can go to dozens of companies and I can show you the things that they do in order to make more referrals, all right? So... Um, hold on, let me just move this out of the way. All right, so everybody with me? I don't see anything in the question box or in the chat box. Everybody still there? Yes, okay. Great. So uh, I am pumped. <laughs> I love that. Cool. Um, as you could tell, you know, I'm a little bit also. I did have did have my bulletproof coffee this morning because I knew I knew that I was going to be with all of you today and I just wanted to make sure that I had my my energy my energy up. All right. So, let's talk about five things that they do um, that um, really set them apart and really help them drive millions and millions of dollars in referral business to to them. Number 1, all about the customer. They wow their customers. So um, I think it was Saturday, I sent out a, an email um, and I was talking about our experience lately with contractors. And we've had, we just bought a house down, down the street that way, a few minutes. And this thing needed a ton of work. Just to give you a hint, um, we bought the house at land value. You know what that means. That means the house needs a ton of work. And so over the last uh, couple of months, that's what we've been doing. We've been doing a lot of work in that house. And we've had all kinds of people come through there. At the beginning, at the beginning, there was a couple where I was like, man, I would, I'd really love to see these guys get more business. I'd really love to see these guys, because they're not like, you know, we're in Miami, so it's a little bit hard to get, like, a real company like what you guys have over here. I wish some of you were here so you could help me. Um, but that's a whole other story. But they started strong. I mean, there's a couple of them. They started really strong. But as we went through the project, it's like that customer experience just started to go like this. You know, now – replacement versus longer term stuff like some of the stuff that we were doing um, is, is very different. So if you're a remodeling contractor and you're in a house for weeks, uh, you have a tougher job. You, you really do. You've got a tougher job. If you're in the replacement business, you have no excuse. <laughs> I don't mean to point my finger at you. I just, you know, I'm using my hands. Um, you're in and out in like a day or two, right? If you're a plumber, if you're HVAC, you're in there for hours. Keep that, that, that ex customer experience has to be 
from beginning to end has to be amazing, right? You've got to ask yourself at every interaction point with the customer, how do I wow my customers? At this interaction point, face-to-face, toe-to-toe with that, with that customer, how do I wow them? This is on the phone. This is with your salespeople. This is with your installers. This is with your production manager. This is with everybody in the organization. Now, these guys, Aries, they have a system. They have a system. Very simple. Here's how, where it starts. Here's how it goes. Boop, 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 boop. All of their people know the system. By the way, by the way, as a sideline here, they're really good with their people. They're amazing with training. Listen to my, listen to the podcast that I did, the Wealth Contractor podcast with Ari. It's one of the first two. I forgot which episode it is, but look for it. Ari Hatch. He is, he's all about the customer. All, all of them. The whole family. It's all about the customer. Their, their philosophy is you treat that customer right, and that customer is going to turn around and treat you right. Too many people in the replacement business, too many people in plumbing and HVAC. I mean, I used to be in the handyman business, okay? We took that shit for granted, sorry. We took that for granted, right? It's got to be about the customer because in order for them to make a referral, right, a couple things need to be in place. Number one, they have to have confidence in you. They have to be confident that you're going to be able to deliver to their friend the same amazing experience that that they delivered to, that you delivered to them okay and they got to trust you they got to trust that you got a system in place to be able to do this so it's about trust it's an about confidence because why because they don't want to look bad to their friends their neighbors their family and their coworkers why don't i make more referrals simple there aren't a lot of people I trust, right? And you guys are probably the same. However, however, in our business, we rely on referrals. I rely on you. I rely, you know how much business Ari has sent? Not, never mind how much they've spent with us, which is, which is a huge number. Do you know how many people they have recommended? To, do you know how many people they've gone out of their way to recommend to us? We live off of that just like they do, right? And so it's about delivery. It's about wowing the customer. It's about taking care of your customer. Um, yes, it is. I'm not sure, David, what that comment was about it not being sustainable. Absolutely, it's sustainable. I'm not sure if you're talking about you know, every day being able to do it or if you're talking about being there for weeks and, and keeping it sustainable, but there are companies that do it. It absolutely is sustainable. You need to make it a sustainable part of your business. Because here's the thing. It, it's like anything else in business. It's painful at first, but the payoff at the end is huge, right? It's like it's, it's the same thing as like when we're, if we're talking about customer experience. That's a system in your business. But you all know the more systems you have in your business, the less you have to be there in order to operate that business, right? The less that business relies on you to turn the screw or, you know, make this lever work and all of that, right? That's the business you all want. I don't know about you, but that's the business I want, right? I want to be able to come and go as I please. I want to be able to work on the things that are in the highest and best or the highest and best use of my time. I don't, I don't want to feel like a slave to my business. So create a system for your customer experience, right? You, when you deliver, when you create that system, then you train your people, you teach your people, this is how we do it here. It's like any system in your business, sales, marketing, production, all of it, you know? This is how we do it here, okay? And, th- and from that, this is how we do it here, that's, that's how it's done, and, th- and then you manage that system, okay? The more that system works on its own, the more freedom you get, by the way, okay? Um, that's something me and Addy have worked really hard on here. I mean, we don't have a big company. We don't have a lot of employees. We do, you know, we do good volume, but 
Our system for delivering, and I'm pointing that way because our operations room is in the next uh, office over or group of offices over, I'm not involved. In fact, they don't want me involved. You know why? Because I mess everything up, right? They don't want me involved. So I'm not sending out thousands of emails every day. It's not me. They all do that. I set up the system. It was painful and hard at the beginning, but now I don't have to do it. I got people that do that for us. Same thing you want to create for your business. So one of the people you really want to study here when it comes to customer experience and one of the businesses that you want to study is Disney. Walt Disney said, do what you do so well that when people see you do it, they want to see you do it again. Formula for repeat business. They want to see you do it again. Imagine contractors, you know. How many people want contractors back in their house? Well, I have clients, the client I was telling you about earlier that's in the D.C. year, his people want him to come back. They love him. They want him to come back. They want his people to come back because of the experience that he provides. Same thing with Aerie. They want to deal with them again. Now, they don't want to buy another roof, obviously, but they want to deal with They want to stay engaged with them, and they do an amazing job of staying engaged with people. Now, they want to see you do it again, and here's the referral part, and we'll bring others to see you do it. So when you're thinking about your customer experience, when, they're, when you're looking at your customer experience, then think Disney. Think about what would Walt do? What would Disney do in this situation? That's how you walk through it. Play customer in your business. Okay? Number two, number two, simple thing. They say thank you. Now, here this is part of this is part of what we do for them. But here, it's instructive for you. Look, you guys can go. I'm showing you everything. I'm showing you everything. At the end of this, you're gonna have three options. One is do it yourself. Two is do nothing with it. And three is maybe some of you will want somebody to do it for you. And hopefully you'll consider us, right? But those are really your three options at the end of this. Right? You want to do it yourself here? I'll show you how to do it all. Go do it, okay? Because this is what's going to help uh, move your business forward. So, um, Aries, their thank you. Let me show you what this really looks like instead of in a picture. This is the thank you package. So imagine a week after the job has been done, when they've already forgotten about you, this box shows up, right, via priority mail. Now, when they go in and they open it up, inside there's going to be a thank you card from the family. There's going to be a jar of cookies in there, you know, all cool. There's going to be a request for feedback inside of this thing. Now, does this look expensive? It's all relative. Not to them it's not. In fact, in fact, they're upping their game. They're upping their game. This is something we've been working on. It's the first time I'm showing it. This is something we've been working on for like three months. Matthew came to me a few months ago and said, hey, Brian, what do you think about sending out Yeti cups in the box to say thank you? And I said, cool, what's a Yeti cup? This is a Yeti cup. Now, this is not actually the brand Yeti. This is a knockoff, but it's pretty damn good knockoff. Look at this thing. This thing's cool as hell. There's a black version. Look at the quality of this thing. And there's a white version. These are a few bucks. The box is a few bucks. Well, guess what? Starting in a few weeks, this is now going to start going in to this box. Now, the jar of cookies is going to go away, but in its place, there's going to be, we're going to put in a big bag of cookies. So they're going to get cookies. They're going to get the Yeti cup that's branded with Aries Roofing, which people are going to love. I mean, this is like, this is not plastic. You know, I'm drinking out of this thing, this little, this little cup. I'm going to change my water. This is my water cup now. I think I'm going to change it to this thing because this thing's huge. I've run out of water here, as you can tell. I'm drinking a lot. But this is cool as hell. Did their costs just go up? Yep, a lot. 
per customer just went up almost, well, I don't know if I should say, but it's gone up. Let's just say that, okay? They are not afraid to invest in their customer. Now, by the way, a lot of this has become the backbone of their marketing because they're saying thank you to their customers. They're showing up in a way that nobody else is showing up. Nobody else is showing up. This is a simple, easy little way for you to stand apart from everybody else. Even if you didn't provide the most amazing experience, do you think when something like this shows up that they're going to think better of you, that, they're, that it's going to leave a better taste in their mouth? Of course it is. Right? So there's all kinds of different ways that you can say thank you. The point is say thank you. Make it a big deal. Make them feel like, hey, you know what? You are more than just a contract to me, right? You know, it amazes me how many businesses don't do this either. Think about, think about this. When was the last time you bought something or worked with a service provider and they actually went out of their way and said thank you? We worked with, you know, when we bought that house, we worked with a, we worked with a, a guy that did the real estate transaction and the loan, and the loan. He double dipped. It was okay because it was a friend of a friend. You know, apparently not 100% legit, but he double dipped. Hopefully there's no uh, whoever governs that board. Florida Real Estate License Board is not listening. But the guy made a few bucks on us. And he worked, you know. But not one, not even a thank you card, not even a little thank you card. Now, was I expecting it? No. No. But would it have been nice to get it? Yeah. Now, considering also what my business is, I'm always on the lookout. My radar is out. I'm looking for somebody, somebody to impress me, somebody to stand out, right? Haven't seen it in a long time. Not many people. But guess what? My clients... We don't have that issue. Their customers, they're impressed, right? They're not wondering, well, you know what? Oh, yeah, I didn't get a thank you. I didn't even hear from these people. I didn't get anything from them, not with my clients. So anyway, so this is a big part of it. Make a big deal out of it, all right? Make a big deal out of it. Get them something. And look, you know, I ask people all the time, okay, here, look. Here, we're going to present you with this. How are you going to pay for it? How are you going to pay for it? There's a few different ways. One is take it out of your existing marketing budget because you got shit that's not working. I know it. You know it. Find out what it is. Take a little tiny piece out of it and use it for your past customers. And you don't have to give me the money. Give it to them, right? Put a gifting program into place. Do something on the back end. That's number one. Number two is just make it a line item. If you're not, you know, I have a client – I have a client right now that I know, I know that their marketing budget is this, right? It's a line item budget, but they're only spending this. They can't find stuff to spend their money on. So it's like, so now they're doing all this stuff. It's like, okay, let's spend a little bit more. So if you're not using your entire, now that's an, an exception. The other thing is, look, charge your customer for it. Add it on to the bill. Charge them an extra 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Put an admin fee in there that's non-commissionable so that you can pay and deliver them the experience that they deserve. This is not only about you. This is also about how you make that customer feel, right? Don't be selfish here and think, oh, this is only about, this is only about us. No, it's also about them, right? It's also about the customer. It's part of the fee that they pay. Look, in all of these other – at Disney, don't you pay a premium to go to Disney? Of course you do. Don't you pay more to shop at Nordstrom because the floors are nicer and the displays are nicer? Of course you do, right? Don't you pay more to sit in first class than you do in the back of the, in the, back of the plane? Of course you do. Everybody does it, right? And you know what? As a customer, as a consumer, as a homeowner, I'm going to pay a little bit more. Right? Uh, if, you, if you are providing me with extra value, I'm going to pay a little bit more. So charge a little bit more. For most of you, your average ticket is between $7,500 and $10,000. Add 1%. 1%. 1%. 
1%. Raise your price by 1%. Is that going to really make that much of a difference in your thing, in, in your close rates? Absolutely not. And if it is, you've got a problem, right? It's a bigger problem than that. But 1%. Most of you are underpriced anyway, right? At 5, at 10. That's all another conversation. I won't go into it. The important thing here is find the money. Find the money and get this done. Got to do it. Look at what these guys are doing, right? They want to spend more on their customers. How do I spend more? How do I do more? How do I impress them more after I've collected the money? After I've collected the money, right? It sounds counterproductive, but you know what? Shit works, right? Number three, they stay in touch. They stay in touch with their customers. How many companies do a piss poor job of this? You know, piss poor. I'm looking at questions. I'll, I'll answer. I'll, I'll get to your question. Hunter has a Hunter has a couple of questions. Um, I'll get I'll get some Hunter. Um, so they stay in touch, right? You've got to be there. You cannot let them forget about you because you know what? They will. You know how many people I forget about? What was it? There was something that. There was something, I can't remember what it was, but it, it doesn't matter. I completely, I, I wanted to work with this person again. I wanted to call them again. Could not remember who they were. Whose fault is that? Is that my fault that I can't remember them? Hell no, it's not my fault. It's their fault because it's their job to make sure that they stay in front of me, that they continually remind me of the value that they bring to my life the solutions that they provide, and how to get a hold of them, right? So stay in touch. Now, how do you do this? Well, you use the telephone. You use email. We're starting to use texting a little bit. You've got to be careful with that, but texting. Here's the thing that blows a lot of people away. You've got to be in their mailbox too. Mailbox. You know that thing where... You know, envelopes come and magazines come and real physical stuff. Direct mail is not dead. The mail is not dead. There's less competition there, although in the last year or two, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it's going up again. There was a time 10 years ago where your mailbox was jam-packed and flooded. Then it started to really die off there, and it's starting. It's down here, but it's starting to come up a little bit more. But there's less competition there. So you got to be there, right? So these guys with a one product company, we're sending newsletters to their customers. Newsletters, right? We're sending, we're sending other mail to them. <clears throat> this is a mailer that, that we do. Again, this is all instructive. You know, you guys can rip me off. Do exactly what I'm doing. Do exactly what I'm showing you here to do. I just I want you to be successful. I want you to make more money. And if you got to rip me off to do it, how about it? All right? So look, this goes out. I showed you the box, the thank you box. This is our fake check letter. This goes out a couple weeks after the box goes out. When they open it up, at the top there, there's a check. Right? It's not a real check. But then when they open up the letter, it says, Hey, can I send you a check for whatever this amount? Aries is more than 25 bucks, but whatever, it doesn't matter, right? And, and basically what we're saying is, hey, would you help me spread the word about my company, right? So this is one thing. This is mail, physical mail that's going to their mailbox. But then also what we're doing is we're doing emails. We're doing uh, our Happy Home Gazette email newsletter. It goes out every month like clockwork, every single month. Month. Now, it's not all about roofing. Nobody cares. It's not all about roofing. Nobody cares. There's a recipe in there. There's referral program in there. There is an offer in there. There's maintenance. Like, what about, you know, what stuff should you be doing? Um, and then there's the physical, you know, the physical printed newsletter. Um, winter, uh, this was the winter issue of this year. You know, cute. The little snowman there, but you know this is another company, but it's got you know it's got their company logo, phone number, website, 
when you go inside, it's not all about roofing. It's not all about windows. It's not all about plumbing. Nobody cares about that stuff, right? So we put a recipe in there. We put maintenance checklists. We put family stuff in there. Um, we do um, a movie trivia contest, right? We do the referral program. We're giving stuff away. Well, I'll talk about the referral program in a second. But, you know, you can also, by the way, in the newsletter, here's another thing you can do. Put an insert. An insert inside. Now, the insert is a sales piece, right? So, look, there's offers. So, those of you that are selling, um, in Aries' case, we're not doing, we're, oh, wait. No, I, that's a whole other topic. Um, I'll get to that in a second, actually. That's number five. But um, um, if you're a multi-product company, this is the best way that you can stay in touch with those customers and continually, continuously remind them of all of the other products and services that you provide. How many of you are multi-product companies and you have customers that have bought one thing from you, but you know they bought the other thing that you could do from somebody else? By the way, if you don't know this, if you have a killer system, great, I applaud you, but for most of you, I'm not a betting man, but I will bet you the biggest stake in Texas, biggest stake in Miami, that you give me 100 names in your database and I call all 100 people, I will find somebody in there that has done a service that you provide or has bought a product that you sell from somebody else. Why? Because we didn't stay in touch with them. Very simple. I learned this the hard way too. So when we had our handyman business, when we had our handyman business, when we first started that business, A, I built it off the back of another business. I used the customers that I was staying in touch with in another business to start that business. Okay, I went from one home improvement. I actually did this uh, a couple of times. I, I went off the back of other businesses. But once, once, when we started that business in the first few months, we did a newsletter. Why? Because I knew newsletters worked. I knew I had to stay in touch with the customers. Well, guess what happened? I got lazy. I got lazy. That first year, the first couple months I did a newsletter and then it took a few more months and then we did we did three newsletters that year. I should have been do, I should have done 12. We did three. And guess what? The next year, the next year, the next year, nothing. Then what I tried to do is what a lot of you guys do. I sent out one piece and said, "Hey, give me money, give me money, give me money." Well, guess what? They had already forgotten about me then. I hadn't built a relationship with them. I hadn't built rapport, enough rapport with them. They had already found another provider. So guess what? My direct mail didn't work. Why? Because I didn't have a good relationship with people. With something like this, there is really, with a newsletter, I don't recommend for any, any business, B2B, B2C, there's no better way to stay in touch and stay sticky with your customers than with a print newsletter. All right? So um, with the print newsletter, we do it quarterly. Um, so this goes out in the mail, January, April, July, and October. The email newsletter goes out every month. They're complimentary. They work with each other. All right. That is the keeping in touch part. Okay. That's number three. Number four, they have a referral program. Now, they happen to use our referral program, but here's the thing with referral programs. Here's the thing. You should have something. The problem with most companies, and here's, here's, here's where referral programs fall apart, because almost everybody we talk to has a referral program, but here's the problem. The problem is you barely talk about it. People don't know about it. You're not reminding them about it. So we, we got to a point where, you know, we realized that, hey, wait a minute, we need an excuse to talk to people about referrals on a regular basis. So years ago when we started G4, we put into place a quarterly contest. Every quarter we are going to give something cool away. Now, the reason for this is one, is to spark referrals. It's to, it's to say, hey, you could win a iPad, you could win a TV, you could win a Bose Sound, you could win you know, a, a, an Apple Watch. The real kind of the secret sauce behind it, which I don't mind sharing with you, is that the reason we did it is not so much about the prize, 
but was about being able to keep going back and having an excuse to keep going back and talking about referrals. See, again, what a lot of companies do is they'll they'll have their um, they'll have their like materials, you know, maybe like this that they'll you know packet. Here is your packet from you know ABC Company, you know, with all of your stuff in it. Here it is. And oh, by the way, somewhere in here we've got oh, here's your referral program packet. Here's our referral program. If you recommend somebody to us, we'll give you and they buy something. We'll we'll uh we'll give you a percentage of the job or we'll give Okay. Great. Fine. Then it never happened. Then it's never talked about again. Well, we don't make that mistake. All right? Neither do does Ari. They're constantly in there talking about referrals, right? So you got to talk about referrals up front. You got to talk about referrals during the project. You got to talk about referrals after the project, and you got to keep talking about referrals. Okay? They have referral partners. So this is a bigger topic, and if if I get a request, if I get enough requests for it, I'll introduce you all to my um, what we call our Team 100 concept. But basically, here is the concept. The concept is: Do you have other businesses that are servicing the same customer as you that can be feeders, can be referral feeders to your business? Do you or don't you? Um, Aries does. They have other people that are referring business to them. They cultivate those relationships. They maintain those relationships. Those people are on their newsletter list. Those people get invited to their party. Um, they do a big Christmas party every year. Um, they stay sticky with those people, and those people will also be feeding them business. Their other referral partners are their customers. Think about this. Their customers are their referral partners. Because of all of the other stuff that they're doing, they're staying sticky with their customers, so their customers are driving more business to them, right? This is, you know, people talk about word of mouth. You know, how did you hear about us? Well, I heard about you from such and such. Well, and then you look and you say, well, who is such and such, right? <laughs> who is that person? We don't even know who that person is, right? Um, how you create these people, by the way, is you make every referral a big deal. So to create those referral partners, one is you got to know who's making referrals, right? You got to know who is making that referral. Um, with our clients, we go through a whole training of, you know, when is the right time to ask for referrals? When is the wrong time? So we give them some Jedi mind tricks and, you know, certain scripting and language to use, you know, um, during the setup process. How do you plant the seeds for referrals and all of that? Um, I'm not going to go into all of that. That's what our clients pay us for. But here's what I'll, here's what I will tell you. Make every referral a big deal. I just did a one of the podcasts recently um, was about this topic. Was um, about Pareto. Um, and the 80-20 rule and how it applies to, not only to how does it apply to everything, but how does it specifically reply, reply, uh, apply to referrals, right? So with Aries and, and most, you know, 95% of our other clients, when a referral happens, that referral gets a thank you, right? That person gets some sort of, you know, we do checks, right? Some people will send gift cards. Um, some people will give gifts. You know, the other client I was talking about in the D.C. area, he gives gifts. He's got a gifting program. So when you give one referral, you get this gift. When you give uh, a, your second referral, you get a slightly different gift. When you give a third referral, and he's got a system for this, they take it really seriously. So what you could start doing today right now, is when those referral leads come in, 
make sure you know who the um, person is that's making the referral. And then go out of your way to say thank you. Now, here's, here's what I believe. You know, after all of these years of doing this, here's what I try and get all of my clients to do. Give the reward for the, for the appointment, not only for the job. Now, some people will tier it. So if you get the appointment, you get this. But if you get the job, you get this. To me, that adds complexity. It's ideal, but it adds complexity. To make it easy, if the referral turns into an appointment and you get face-to-face -face in front of somebody, that's it, regardless of outcome, because they've done their job. They introduced you to somebody, helped get you in the door. Now it's on you. Now it's on you, not on them to sell the job for you. That's why I say give it for appointments. Now also, here's the thing that you're going to be doing, is you're going to be rewarding double the amount of people. So you're building more referral partners. Because once you start to do this, once you start to do this, and you do it consistently every single month. You know, Aries has been with us for how many months? Seven years, no, six, seven years. They've been with us seven years and a few months, right? So seven years is 84 months plus a few, call it 85 months. For 85 months, like clockwork, these checks have been going out. Like clockwork. You make an appointment or, or we run the appointment, you get rewarded. How do you think you build out your referral partners? That's how you do it. You build them out, right? So just be – so. A lot of these programs are, well, if we sell the job, we'll give you something. You're selling one out of three, maybe one out of two, you know. Call it one out of three. Let's be conservative. You're leaving two people on the table because you're only rewarding one of the three people that you should be rewarding. And you're cutting your referral partners down by two-thirds. Reward them all. Right? So know your numbers. So the average lead, the average issued lead is up to $375. Now, your number is probably different, but that's the average. Let's just take the average, right? So that's what you pay for an issued lead. Three of, it takes, generally takes three to four of those to make a sale. So what is your cost of, of, of sale? Right? It's $375 times four. So you're paying... To buy a customer, you're paying $1,400, let's say. Keep the math easy. You're paying $1,400 to buy a customer. How much are you giving somebody to make a referral? Think about it, right? So a lot of people will say, well, you know, we'll give you $200. Okay, great, great number, right? But it's on the sale. Come on, right? Give $100, give $50, but give it for the appointment. See, the amount doesn't matter. And by the way, most people aren't looking to get this check. Um, I talk about this in, in almost all of my presentations when we're talking about referrals. Um, I made a referral back in, oh, shit, there's no postmark on this. Anyway. I made a referral to Ruby receptionists years ago, years ago, right? And in the mail, I wasn't expecting anything. Most people aren't. That's not why I make referrals. But guess what showed up? I still have it, by the way. This is, we're talking four years ago, easily four years ago. Okay, maybe there's a date on it actually inside, okay? Look at what I got in the mail. I open it up from the desk of Ruby. I open it up. I look inside. Yeah, there's no date. Look, a handwritten note. Hi, Brian. Thank you so much for referring Mandy Blank. We are delighted to receive their business. Please enjoy this $50 Visa gift card as a token of our gratitude. Best, the Ruby team. 
Now, you'll notice the $50 gift card's gone. It's a long expense, right? I would have kept this. I would have been just as happy about this if it was just the card and no $50. However, however, the $50 makes it more memorable, and for some people, it's a big motivator. Now, I've recommended Ruby to thousands of companies um, out there in all of my speaking. I've recommended to thousands of companies. I'm not looking for money from these people, right? That's how your people are too. Some of them, now look, some people would have gotten that $50 gift card and would have been like, oh man, how do I get more, right? That's some people. Cover them too, right? But then you're gonna, most people are going to be like, man, I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for it. But you know what? When it happens, it stands out. And it says to me, right, and, and now mind you, I'm in this business. I help companies do this, right? But what this says to me is this is a first-class organization. This is an organization that's got processes and systems in place. So if I recommend somebody to them, guess what? they're going to take really good care of them, and they're not going to make me look like a turd, right? So there you go. That's Aerie, and that's also not just them, but it's also my some of my most successful clients, especially in the areas of um, – especially in the areas of um, relationship repeat referral – this is what they're doing. They wow their customers. They say thank you. They make them feel special for choosing them. They stay in touch. They have a formal referral program that's constantly being reminded, constantly being talked about, and they make a big deal out of every referral that comes in so that they're creating referral partners. That's how it works. Right? Um, questions. Uh, Hunter, you had a question what kind of money are you talking with reward for appointment and not appointment and work? Do you escalate for second and third? Good question. Here's what I would say to you. If you don't have a system now, start off with something simple. Every appointment or every referral that turns into an appointment gets a thank you card with a check for 25 bucks or a Visa gift card for, or a Starbucks gift card, something easy. Something simple. The trick is consistency. Okay? So what we do is we have one time a month where we go to all of our clients and we say it's referral reward time. Okay? Or referral appreciate I'm sorry, referral appreciation time. If you want us to do it for you, send us the names of every person that made a referral and who they referred and we'll take care of it for you. We'll send out the thank you. We'll send out the check. Okay? Do the same thing in your business. Have one day at the at maybe it's the, the second or third of the month where you go back to the last month and you look at every person that came in that made a refer that came in by referral, who referred them, whether it, it resulted in an appointment, and you send them a thank you with a with a, a gift. The money Part is a few. It doesn't matter. I got clients that do twenty-five dollars. I got clients that do two hundred and fifty dollars. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you do it and you do it consistently. Now, to the other part of that question, do you escalate it for the second and the third? Well, yes. When you've got a system in place, just to do the first one. Once you've got a system in place and it's working and it's working month after month after month and you want to now go back and improve that system, have at it. The better you get at it, the more you can do with it. I told you about the, about the other client that, that you make one referral, you get this. You make two referrals, you get this. You make three referrals, you get this. But they have a system. And I've seen it. I've been in his office. They, they have a system for it. All right? It's very clear cut. They run a spreadsheet. They know what's going on. I'm saying if you haven't done it before, don't start with a big complex system. Start with a very simple system. Start simple. Okay. Uh, did somebody ask me about, I don't see the question here. Um, 
Hunter said that's a nice box. Yeah, we worked on that a lot. We, we, we a lot of work went into that into that box. So thank you. Um, all right. Any other questions? All right. So I've got um, I've got an offer for you all that are on the call. I noticed that there are some clients here. So um, um, what I'm going to do is offer you guys a free strategy session. Um, here is what this looks like. Um, there's no obligation for this, um, but what we do is we do a, a, we have a tool called our Wealthy Contractor Opportunity Map. And on the Opportunity Map, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through um, and ask you some questions about key, eight key performance factors in your business. Now, these are areas of opportunity in your that may or may not exist in your in your business. Um, what we're going to be looking for as we go through the exercise with you is we're going to be looking for low-hanging fruit. We're going to be looking for opportunity for leads. We're going to be looking for opportunity for, for more sales. And we're going to be looking, mainly what we're going to be looking for is opportunity for more profit, right? Then what we do is from that information, we're going to help create or we're going to create a custom growth plan for your business. So based on the information that was received, we're going to create a custom growth plan and then we're going to review that for you. We're going to give you all the strategies that you need to execute so you can consistently grow your business profitably. Now here's the thing. We do not charge for this. And you have no obligation to us for anything. So now you may be asking, well, why do you do it then? It's very simple. A couple of reasons. I, I told you before, you ask, at the end of this, you've got three options, really. One is go and do all of this yourself, right? Your second option is to do nothing. And the third option is go hire somebody to do this for you. So the reason why we do this is very simple. For those of you that want to do it yourself, great. We'll help you. We'll show you what to do and go do it. We'd love it. I'd love it. For those of you that don't want to do anything, don't do anything. That's fine. Okay? And then there's going to be a couple of you, a few of you, that are going to want somebody to do this for you. And in that case, then we'll get a shot at being that provider for you. Right? Um, that's how we get, that's, you know, that's basically how we get clients. So the more we can help you, the more we can show you in your business um, what we can do. Or, or what you can do, not what we can do, what you can do in your business to make more money and to make more leads, that's great. It's a win for you and it's a win for us because some of that, you know, some of you are going to want us to do it for you. So um, I see that some of you have um, hit the, uh, you'll see on your screen a poll, and um, on that is uh, about booking your strategy session. Just, you know, um, answer the question, yes, not sure, maybe, no, let us know. I'm going to leave that up for another minute. I'm looking for questions. Um, I'll, I'll leave that up while I'm answering uh, questions. Oh, Hunter, we met at in Malvern. Great. Um, hey, by the way, uh, Hunter, we don't have the date yet, but it's going to be, I think it's going to be, I'm pretty sure it's going to be in February. We're going to do Accelerate 2018. This is the first time I'm mentioning it. Um, but we're going to do Accelerate 2018 in South Florida. And it's going to be awesome. Killer. Um, so be on the lookout for that. If you enjoyed Malvern, um, the one uh, 2018 is going to blow you away. All right? Um, so I see that... Um, there's a few of you that have not answered the poll. Just please just answer the poll. Um, answer the question there, and uh, we, will, uh, we will reach out to you based on your, um, uh, based on your response. Um, sounds amazing. Yeah, it's, it's going to be. I, I can't wait to uh, let everybody know about it. It's going to be very 
uh, very cool. Um, for those of you that have uh, requested uh, more information, um, what we will do is we will send you out a, a copy of the uh, book, The Definitive Guide to Relationship Marketing. If you're a plumber, by the way, if you are a plumber or HVAC, this, this report will apply for, for you guys. Uh, hopefully you could still see. Well, I can't see myself, so I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not. Um, but there is a, um, I've got a, a another report for you guys um, that I'd love to send you out. It also has a CD uh, with it. Um, for those of you uh, that are, oh, you guys only see the poll. Okay. Only the poll is showing. Well, answer it so I can take it off. Come on. Everybody. I'm waiting for a couple of you to, to let us know what you want to do. I know a couple of you are clients, so obviously your answer would be not right now because we're already doing it for you. Okay, I'm waiting for one or two more of you. And then I'm going to go back to show you all the goodies that we can send you. Yes, yours have already been. If yours has already been submitted, just give me a second. I'm just waiting for just waiting for everybody else. And then we're going to wrap up. Just a couple of you left. Answer it. Click the button. Click the button. <laughs> Well, let me close it out so I can show you all the stuff that we have available that we can send you out. Um, great. Um, all right. Uh, so can you guys, you guys should be able to see me now. Okay. So I'm, I should be back. So look, so um, what I'm going to do for those of you that said, send me more information, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to blow you away. Right? I'm going to send you one of these thank you boxes with cookies. And once you have those cookies, then you're going to want to talk to us because those are some damn good cookies. Anyway, whatever. Um, I'm going to send you a copy of, of the Definitive Guide to Relationship Marketing. Um, there is a CD uh, in the back that you can listen to in in your um, in your car. I'm going to send you a blueprint, um, and I'm going to send you a, a thank you box. Um, if you are a plumber, if you're in the plumbing business, and you would like a copy of this report, the fastest, easiest, most profitable way to double the income of your plumbing business, let me know, and um, I will get you uh, a package with this in it. And there's a couple. Um, uh, CDs and stuff that go with this uh, as well. All right. Um, where are you getting the thank you box materials? Um, well, that's a secret. Um, <laughs> uh, no, you, I, I, the, the way that, um, the way that we've put this together, I mean, you'd have to just basically, again, rip it off. Do your own version of what we are doing. Um, the stuff that we're doing is all kind of proprietary. It's all stuff that we've developed. Um, but again, it doesn't mean you can't just go rip it off, you know, and find something similar to it and uh, do something similar to it. Um, all right. I think that's it, everybody. Unless there's any other questions, um, okay, sorry, I thought, I thought there, was, there was a comment there that I needed to respond to. Um, all right, great, everybody. So um, I will look at your information. I will give your information. If you are interested in, a some of you are interested in strategy sessions, um, that's awesome. 
Um, I'm going to have Addy or Alex reach out to you to set that up with uh, either Addy or Jamie and go through the opportunity map and the growth plan. Um, if you didn't get a chance to answer um, the poll question and you want us to um, you want to set something up with us, the number is there. The number is below. Uh, just reach out, give us a call. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you so much. I know we ran a little bit over. I appreciate you being here. Um, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. I'm here. Um, that's the that's what I uh, that's what I do. That's what we do. Help you guys make more money. All right. So uh, have a great day. Have a great week. Um, I am uh, stuck here in the gloomy, ugly gray of of uh, Miami, um, but. I'll find something to do. All right, everybody. Uh, bye. Thank you. And for those of you that are going to be at Yoho next week, uh, please make sure and stop by and say hello. Uh, anybody still wants to go, I think I've got a couple of tickets. I can hook you up. No fee. Let me know. All right? Call the number that's either below or to the side. It's somewhere. All right, you guys. Bye. Thank you.